Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Liberty Church again online. And um, we're just going to start with some announcements and prayer, and we're going to pass over to Patrick for, for this week's message. Uh, first of all, I just want to uh, say thank you to everyone that participated in Island Calling. It's, it's hard to believe it was only a week ago, just under a week ago, that we did this. And by all accounts, it's been really successful. And I say successful that God has been glorified and is still being glorified in this. And you know, the reports that we've been having back about it, and Dor touched on it during the week in the midweek message, that the, the, the amount of people that, are, that were blessed by the prayer and the worship song and to see a nation come together. And now this has gone out to the world and there have actually been reports come back from other countries wanting to take this on and follow the same format. So God's been glorified and what a privilege to lift Jesus' name up in this country, make it about him and not about us. Um, so thank you for everyone that took part again. Uh, we've actually reached nearly 1,300 views on the on the both videos, so that it's a, it's an amazing feat. Um, so praise God. Uh, the breaking of bread, uh, breaking of bread will be returning in two weeks' time. So uh, what we're going to do is to send out some information in between then, just to tell you how to get ready for it. Uh, it's pretty simple, uh, some juice and some bread, but we're going to do it together. We always did it every week up in Mungret, up in the church. And so we're just going to reintroduce that and we're going we're gonna to break bread together as a church and, and remember what Christ uh, has done for us. Psalm 63 says, O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your glory, see your power and your glory. So I just want to encourage you this morning as we listen to the message that Patrick's, uh, Pastor Patrick's going to deliver. And it's an opportunity for us to go a bit deeper you know, there, we are, we have been in a dry and thirsty land, and he's obviously talking in the spirit. You know, David writes this when he's in the wilderness of Judah, but he's also talking about the spiritual dryness that we have. And this is an opportunity to come into a, a place with the Lord Jesus Christ where you say, Lord, my soul thirsts for you. You know, blessed are those who thirst and hunger for righteousness. And in Ezekiel, he gets this image of the water or the, the stream or the river coming out from the throne room of the living God, the altar in the throne room of the living God. And Ezekiel walks into this water, and the, and the water is obviously the Holy Spirit, and he goes ankle deep and knee deep until he's fully immersed in the water. So I'm going to encourage the church this morning to just to go a little bit deeper like Ezekiel did in the water. Go a little bit deeper with the Holy Spirit this morning. You know, Christ gives us, you know, water, that we would never thirst again, and he gives us bread that we'd never hunger again. So I want to encourage you this morning as we listen to the message from Pastor, um, and I'm just going to open it with prayer uh, just before Patrick comes up. So Heavenly Father, Lord, I just give you this meeting. Lord, I thank you for your endless mercies and grace that we, that we live under. And Lord Father, I thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you had to go away to send your Holy Spirit, Lord, so we can... We can, as Acts, it says in Acts, that you have given us power, Lord, not our power, but the Holy Spirit power, and we can operate in that. And Lord, that you have given us living water and bread, that we would never thirst or hunger again. So Heavenly Father, I give you this meeting, and I say, Lord, do a mighty work in the hearts of your people, in Jesus' name. Amen. Be blessed, and I'm going to pass over to Patrick, and uh, we will see uh, Dor is actually, uh, Dorothy will be actually... Um, uh, preaching next Sunday, so we'd look forward to that as well. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I was going to say lovely to see you all again, but unfortunately I can't say that. But you can say that about me. It's great to be here and great to be able to bring the word, and uh, I just want to pray first. And I'm smiling, and I'll tell you the reason why I'm smiling uh, shortly. Dear Father, we give this word into your hands. You have given it to me, Father. You've put it on my heart, Lord. And, and Father, 
I just want to give it back to you, Father. I want nothing, Lord, of myself in it, Lord. Everything of you, Father, this morning as I come to you. In Jesus' name, amen. The reason I'm smiling is because I was listening to what uh, Pastor Jeremy was just sharing there with you. And everything he spoke on is what I'm going to speak on today. Um, I was looking for a heading. What heading would I put on, on the message? And of course, it's going deeper. So I don't have to really stand up here at all because he's given the message already. But I just want to give you what God has, has put on me. A few extra little things maybe that God has given to me that he didn't give to Pastor Jeremy. Or maybe he did and he hadn't time to say them. But we're going to start in John chapter 4, and we're going to talk here about the woman at the well. Now, you all know that my love in the, uh, for this particular uh, message or part of Scripture goes way beyond anything else. Everybody in the church knows that I love the story of the woman at the well, and I've spoken on it many times. But this morning, I just want to bring maybe from a different perspective on it. I believe God has given me, uh, well, he has showed me something different that he wants me to see, and I just want to give that to you today, what God has given to me. So as we read in John chapter 4, about the woman at the well, and if we start in verse 10 of chapter 4, I'm just going to read a few scriptures here, and it says, And uh, Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. Now, in other words, he's saying he would have given you himself, this living water that he's speaking about here is himself. And the woman said to him, she said, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Now, if she hadn't asked that question there, where do you get this living water? Um... Perhaps I would have to go around the bush this morning and trying to explain to you where do you get this living water. But for all of us who, who have our Bibles and we know the word, etc., etc., we know that the living water is Christ himself. When we receive Jesus into our lives, the living water, Christ comes, he said, no longer would he be with us, but he'd be in us. So it's the Holy Spirit now living within us, the person of Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit. And this is the living water that he's talking about here. And this water is something that brings life. And we will go uh, later on in the message, you will see that we will touch on a place already shared by uh, Jeremy saying in Ezekiel, where he talks about a river of life. And we will go there later on in the message. But first of all, here we have, and he's speaking, he says, and he, she says, are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself? as well as his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of the water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst, but the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Now the fountain here, when he speaks about fountain here, that's the initial start of being born again. That's the initial start of receiving Christ into your life. That's the initial start of stepping out in faith into the river of life. And uh, that's what he's speaking about here. And if we can go, please, to John chapter 7, just a couple of little verses here, starting at verse 37. And in verse 37 it says, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. I want to say to you this morning, brothers and sisters, if you're th thirsty this morning for any spiritual drink, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus, the river of life. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, rivers of living water cannot flow out from a heart that doesn't contain the rivers of living water. So you have to contain that living water first, that is Jesus Christ living within you, before out of you can come these rivers of living water that are refreshing channels for everybody else. So these refreshing channels that come out of you cannot come out of you unless they're in there. So you have to have the living water within you. And he says, but this he spoke concerning the Spirit, concerning the Holy Spirit, 
whom those believing in him would receive, for the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not glorified. In other words, Jesus was not crucified. Jesus had not risen from the dead. So Jesus was not glorified. He had not gone back to his Father. So he was not yet glorified. So when that day occurred, when that day happened, and Jesus rose from the dead, and Jesus went to the Father, and he sent the Holy Spirit, then the river of life that he's speaking about here comes to live in men and women who receive Christ into their lives. Now, if we could go to uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 11. Now, Jesus Christ was offering to the woman at the well new life. She was a woman that was broken. She was a woman in, in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 to 19, uh, um, Jesus quotes from Isaiah 63 and uh, he says that I was anointed to uh, preach the gospel to the poor. Now he's not talking about the poor financially, he's talking about the poor in spirit. And he says to heal the brokenhearted, he says to open the eyes of the blind, that means the spiritually blind, and he's talking about, uh, he said setting the captives free and uh, He's talking about giving liberty to the oppressed, and the oppressed are those who are put down, those who are downtrodden, those who are in slavery to something else. And the captives are those who are held by the enemy in the world, Satan. They are being held captive by him. And Christ has come to put this living water within each one of us to set us free. The brokenhearted, he will set free the broken, he will heal the brokenhearted. And later on we will see verses where he see, says actually that the Christians have in their medicine. And we will read that later on. And some of you know the verses already of which I am speaking. But here in Deuteronomy chapter 11, we read in verse 10. And God is speaking to the Israelites. He has brought them out of Egypt, out of a dry land that we've already heard about. A dry land. And he says, for the land which you go to possess is not like the land of Egypt, Egypt from which you have come where you sowed your seed and watered it by foot as a vegetable garden. Now what he was saying here was that, I am bringing you to a land, he's saying, out of a land that was dry. The rains did not fall on it. But you had to use your feet, you had to go to the river, you had to bring the water in order to irrigate your crops. And he said, this was labor, this was hard work. And what he was saying, Jesus, you can compare this to Jesus at the well. Jesus was at the well and he was speaking to this woman. And he was saying to her, your life is dry. Your life, there is no rain falling from heaven on your life. But I want to bring you to a place, a place where the rains from heaven will come. And they will bring you life and they will bring newness into your life. And they will set you free. This was what Jesus was offering this woman at the well. And that same gift is available to everyone today. The same free gift is free. Free. You don't have to pay for it. Jesus Christ paid for it at the cross. He rose from the dead. He sent the Holy Spirit. And now he comes to reside and bring life in you and I. And that's what Jesus was saying to her. That's the gift that he was offering this woman. And then it goes on to say, and it says, But the land which you cross over to possess is a land of hills and valleys, which drinks water from the rain of heaven. This land that I'm bringing you into, and this is what Jesus was saying to that woman. He was saying to her, I'm going to bring you to a place in your life where you no longer will have to labor for the things that you run after. You'll no longer have to drink water from a dead well. You'll no longer have to run after and labor. She had been overcome, you could say. She was a, uh, I, I don't know what word you would lose, uh, use for it, that she just trusted in men to bring her out of life. She'd had five husbands. The one she was with now was not her husband. And she was using this to find something good in her life, to find life, to find freedom. And Jesus was saying to her, I want to bring you to a place where it will, the rain from heaven will come down. And he's, you see, where Jesus, the land where Jesus is, the land where God is, where he was bringing his people, God was establishing his presence in that land. And the land to where God has you today is a place where he wants to establish his presence in. And God of all power wants to do that in your life. 
And here he says, and he says, and it shall be that if you earnestly obey my commandments, which I command you today, to love the Lord your God and serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will give you the rain from your land in its season. And this is what Jesus Christ was saying to this woman at the well. He was saying to her, look here, all you have to do, and he's saying it to every one of us, you receive Christ into your life. All you have to do, the provision of God in your life is life, is freedom, is forgiveness, is freedom from sin, is a passage to heaven through Jesus Christ. But he's saying the provision that comes from God is based on that you obey me, that you have no sin in your life. If you have that, you repent of it, that you put it aside, you cast it out, and you come to Jesus. And he's saying here that the rain in its season, in the natural, rain comes from the sky and it breaks up the land in the autumn. And then in the spring, the rain comes again to bring growth. And here he was saying in season, he was saying to the woman at the well, Jesus was saying to her, when you need love in your life, then from heaven the rain, the love will pour down. For you need peace in your life, the rain from heaven will pour down the rain of peace. And that's what God is saying here in this, and here the picture is for us, that when we need whatever we need in our lives, all the fruit that we need, the love, the joy, the peace, all of these will pour down from heaven. But sometimes, Jesus said in, in uh, John chapter 7, and we read it already, that rivers of life would flow out from you. But, you know, sometimes these rivers of life don't flow out from us, and we wonder how can that possibly be? Well, if you were to get a hose and you were to connect it to a faucet and you turn on the faucet and the water runs through the hose but then you go to the other end of the hose and the water is not coming through and you wonder what's wrong there's water in the hose but it's not coming through and you go and you check along back along the hose and you find out that there's a kink there there's a blockage there and you free that old blockage out and then you begin to see that the water that's in the hose now begins to flow and it's the same with us the Holy Spirit is in there God doesn't take him out he's in there but there's a blockage because of sin because of disobedience and you're stopping the rivers flowing out to others but when you come to the Lord and you repent of that sin and you ask for forgiveness and he forgives you the blockage is gone and now from you will flow rivers of life channels of satisfaction channels that will flow out to others that are around you and that's what he's talking about here and it's obedience to God that brings this provision the sin that blocks it, the disobedience that blocks it. Could we go please to Ezekiel? Ezekiel chapter 47. And we're going to read here about the river. I see a court during the week and it said, God doesn't want to bring you to where you can. God wants to bring you to where you can't. And as we read this scripture in Ezekiel, you will understand what is meant by that. In other words, God doesn't want to bring you to a place where you can have control. God wants to bring you to a place in your walk with him where you can't have control, but he has. And here in in, in, in 47, chapter 47 of Ezekiel, we read, and I'm going to read as far as verse 12. And it says, Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced east, the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gateway that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with a line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. And he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. And he said, son of man, 
Have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Now the waters is talking about there are the waters of the sea, not of the river. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters go there, for they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from En Gedi to En Eglim. There will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. But its swamps and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. Along the bank of the river, on this side and that, will grow all kinds of trees, and their fruit will not fail. They will bear fruit every month, because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food, and their leaves for medicine. Now here we have a river, a river that flows from the throne of God. It flows from the sanctuary, it flows from the altar of God. And this river starts out as a trickle. Just a trickle. It started out at the woman at the well in a trickle, a little trickle. You could say she was the first evangelist to go and preach the gospel. She went and she told the men in the square who she had met. And it started out as a little trickle. But from her, I believe, came a big wide open river. At Pentecost, it started out as a trickle. But from Pentecost, Peter stood up and he preached the word. And from all the others that were there, the river went out, flowing deep and wide. And here we have, it just starts out as a trickle. You know, the Mississippi River starts out, it's about 20 or 30 feet in its width where it starts, where it begins. And it flows for about 2,000 miles or more into the sea. And when it reaches the sea, it is miles wide and deep. And the reason for that is, is because in its journey from where it starts to where it finishes, there are feeders feeding into it, streams and rivers feeding into it. And these rivers and these streams increase the volume of the water in it. But the river of life has no feeder feeding into it. There is no stream feeding into it. There is nothing feeding into it because this river contains everything of God. Everything of God. It starts with God. It doesn't have an ending. It continues flowing and flowing. And it gets wider and deeper the further it goes. And when it talks there about flowing into the sea, it's actually talking about the Dead Sea. A place where there is no life. And yet when this river flows into that which is dead, it brings life. And here we have this river starting out. It's only a trickle. And first of all, he measured a thousand cubits. And it came up to my ankles, he said. This is when you step out and you step on your journey with the Lord. It's just a step of faith. You're stepping out, but you're still in control. And then he says he measured again and he said that the, the water came up to my knees. And here we have now you're walking with the Lord and you have a prayer life and you have communication with the Lord. You're talking to him and he's talking to you. And, but you still have control. And then he says he measured more, he said, and it came up, the water came up to his waist. And in this, you have, still have control, but here now they're talking about strength. Now you're getting your strength from God. Now you're depending on him to enable you to stand when the enemy comes against you. And he's saying that in this, he says, but you still have control. And then he brings you out further, further he measures out. And you come to a place where you can't stand up. You come to a place where you're a mess. You come to a place where you have to swim. To swim. The, the river is so wide that you cannot, it cannot be crossed. Because right here in this, you've lost control. And God has control. And this is the place, brothers and sisters, that God wants to bring you today. He wants you to bring you into a deeper relationship with him. He doesn't want to bring you to a place where you can, like ankle deep. He doesn't want to bring you to a place like you can, like knee deep. 
He doesn't want to bring you to a place that you can't like waste it. He wants to bring you to a place where you can't, where you're totally immersed and you're walking into deep water with him. And he's in control of your life. And from you are flowing these rivers of refreshing water because within you is the Holy Spirit producing that which comes out of you. And it's not of man, it's of God because the river begins with God. Amen. Hallelujah. And then he says, and he brought me, he says, and there were trees growing along the banks of the river. And these trees represent Christians. These trees represent those who have taken Christ into their lives. And these trees were growing because they were planted by God. In Isaiah 63, verse 1, down at the end of that, he says, they were the planting of the Lord. In other words, they were planted by God in him. They were planted by him and they were the planting of the Lord. And so these trees were growing along the bank of the river and they were being fed by the waters from the river. Their roots were going down deep into the bank of the river and into the river and the food from them, for them was coming from the river. And then he goes on, he says, everywhere he says that the waters touched, life came. Wherever the rivers go, we live. So wherever, whoever the river touches, the woman at the well, Jesus was offering her life, spiritual life. He was offering, offering her a land that was going to be fed with the rains from heaven. A new place, something she'd never experienced in her life before. Here was a broken woman. She had all the characteristics that Jesus spoke about in, in Luke chapter 4 that were quoted in Isaiah 63. She was poor in spirit. She was broken. She was blind because she had no eyes to see until Christ revealed it to her. She was oppressed. She was held captive by the world, by everything that she strived in in the world. She labored for it. It says, as we have read already in Deuteronomy, where it said that you will no longer have to labor. You will no longer have to draw the water to bring it to irrigate your crops. And Jesus Christ was saying the very same thing to this woman. You will no longer have to go to the well to draw water, but I will put within you a water that you will be a fountain within you, and that from you will flow these rivers of living water. And brothers and sisters, he has the very same for you today you can come to him and you can receive from his hand the gift of eternal life the gift of life the water of life that he will put within you and that he will bring to you rivers of flowing out of you that will be channels to other people around you amen and here we go down to the next verse and it talks about fish it says there shall be fishermen will stand it said from in Gedi to in Eglem there will be places for the spreading of their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea. Now what he's saying here is that, here is a picture. He said, people will stand and they will see a barren land. And they will say, nothing good can come out of there. And they will see a people who are of no service to God. They're, they'll say, look at them, they can be of no service to God. But if you remember in John's Gospel, 146, Nathanael and Philip were having a conversation and Philip said to Nathanael, come and see who Moses spoke about, Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, he says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Jesus Christ did, you know, he came out of Nazareth. And people will say the same thing about you and I. Can any good thing come out of wherever you're from? How can God use a person like that? Yes, he can. Yes, he can. He can use anybody. All he needs is for you to come to him. That woman that came to the well, she was a broken woman. She knew absolutely nothing about Jesus Christ. She knew absolutely nothing about living water. She knew absolutely nothing about the rivers of life. She knew absolutely nothing about fountains. All she knew was to come to a well, get a pot of water and go home. But before she left that day, the pot that she had brought, she left it on the ground and she went into town and she told people about Jesus. That's the kind of person that God can use. A useless person like a woman at a well. If he can use her, he can use you. All you've got to do is be available to him and let Jesus put within you that river of life that flows out of you and brings life to others. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And it says, along the bank of the river, and they said, and that will grow all kinds of trees used for food. 
These trees are used for food. You and I use for food. Their leaves will not wither and their fruit will not fail. And these trees, can you imagine having an apple tree? It's growing out in the back garden. You go out and you pick the apples off of it. You go out tomorrow morning and you pick more apples. And you continue doing that. Every month of the year there's apples on the tree. They never run out. That's what happens. People come to you and they pick the fruit from your tree. They pick the fruit of love. They pick the fruit of peace. And it never runs out. Out. No matter how many people come to you for peace or love or joy or patience or whatever it is, the fruit never runs out because the river that you're standing within that's consoling you is coming from God. And here is this fruit. It says it never runs out. It continues, continues, continues. It's always there. Wow, to have a tree like that, that nothing runs out in it. The fruit is always there. And he says, and there he says, they will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. There it is. There it is. It flows from God. That's the reason. That's the reason there's fruit on the tree because it comes from God. The river flows from God. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. Their leaves will be for medicine. Oh, wow. Their leaves will be for medicine. Brothers and sisters, we have within us the river of life. The channel that can flow out of us that can bless others. The channel that can be medicine to others. Like when Jesus spoke about this woman at the well. Jesus offered her medicine. He offered her life. He offered her healing. He offered her love. He offered her peace. He offered her joy. He offered her patience. He offered her gentleness, faithfulness. Every, he offered her every fruit that was growing in the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit working within you, transforming your life, changing you from the inside out, doing a work in you that no man can do. And out of you will flow these rivers that will be all oh, refreshing waters to those around you. And they will want to know that how can you, a person such as you were, be now a person who, from whom all these rivers flow, from whom all this love comes. Maybe you were an unloving person. And, but now Christ has you in his hand and the river is within you and from you is flowing love maybe you were not a peaceful person maybe you were an anxious person that worried about everything maybe you had no peace when you got sick but now God says I put a river within you and the fruit never stops growing and from the rains of heaven will come upon you this peace that no man can understand but it's a peace that's in the river because it's flowing from the heart of God Amen. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 So, brothers and sisters, I want to finish now, but I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you this morning to get into the water with Christ, to get into the water with God, and to go deeper with him. We've had it already this morning. From uh, Pastor Jeremy said it this morning, go deeper with God. I, I said to you this morning, God wants a relationship with you that he wants to bring you deep down into that river, deep down into those. He doesn't want you at ankle, ankle level. He doesn't want you at knee level. He doesn't want you at waist level. He wants you deep down in him where he's guiding and leading you and possesses every part of you. Oh, we, as in Deuteronomy, he wants to create a presence where he has you. He wants to establish the presence of God where he has you. He wants to show you that the, whatever you require, the rains from heaven will pour down upon you. And I asked you this morning, if you want that river of life, if you want to go deeper with God this morning, then I ask you to stand wherever you are. And I will pray now for that to come upon you. I will pray that you will walk with God into a relationship with him that no man can understand that no demon can send it away because when God's people move God's people move hallelujah if you cannot stand then just raise your hand maybe you're a person that can't stand up then I say just raise your hand and we will pray dear father father I come to you Lord God almighty and all-powerful God the God who created the heavens and the earth the, the God of all creation. I come to you this morning, Father, and I ask, Lord, you see every man and woman and child that stands before you, Lord. You see hands raised, Lord. Lord God, I present them to you, Father. They're coming to you this morning because they want a deeper relationship with you, Lord. Lord, they don't want ankle deep. 
Oh, Lord, religion, Lord, or spirituality, Lord. They want, Lord, a deep, deep relationship with you, Lord, where you will come, Lord, and you will feed them, Lord, where these rivers within them, Lord, will flow out to others, Lord, where refreshing will come forth from them, Lord. Oh, Lord, come, Father. Come, Lord, and do a work this morning, Lord. Lord, you see these people, Lord. You see their hearts, God. I give them to you, Lord. I ask, Father, that you bring them, Lord, into the river, Lord. Lord, that it immerses them, Father, and that they feel lost within it, Lord, but that they know that they are walking with their God and that he is bringing them to a deep, deep relationship with you. Oh, Father, let them be trees, Father, that are implanted, Lord, along the banks of this river, Lord. Let them get their roots going down into the river, Lord, where they draw their food, Lord, their sustenance, Lord, the requirements, Lord, to lead a godly life, Lord, that come forth, Lord, from the river, Lord. That which is required, Lord, when they're mixed with their neighbors in their jobs, Lord, wherever it may be, Lord God, that the food, Lord, that's being provided by the river, Lord, is now, Lord, coming right up into the tree, Lord, into them, Lord God, and through them, Lord, this food is going out, Lord. The medicine, Lord, that's in their leaves, Lord God, the medicine is going out, Lord, to heal, Lord, those who are poor in spirit, Lord, preaching the gospel, Lord, preaching the good news of Christ, Lord, getting it out there, Lord. Oh, Father, healing the brokenhearted, Lord, letting the blind see, Lord God, giving them sight, Lord, to be able to see Christ, Lord, and to be able to see their need of him, Lord. Oh, Father, Oh, Lord God, set them free, Lord. Set the captives free, Father. Oh, Father, let the oppressed be at liberty. Oh, Lord God, let it be the planting of the Lord. Let this day, Lord, as it says, Lord, in Luke, Lord God, that the year of the Lord, Lord, that this is the year of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord, Father. And I come to you, Father, and ask, Lord, that you do a mighty work in your people, Father. You see them before you, Father. Touch them, God. Touch them, Lord. Raise them up, Father. Set them free, Lord God. Let this be the day, Lord, when lives are changed, Father. When a new day happens, Father, that tomorrow, Father, there will be a changed generation, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Father. Oh, Lord, I can hear your heart calling to people right now, Lord. You're calling them to come to you, Father. And I ask, brothers and sisters, that you just call out to God. He is waiting for your call. And I pray, Lord God, that you will answer them, Father, as you put it on my heart to tell them, Father, that God will answer your call wherever you're calling from this morning. It is not an answering machine you will get, but you will get the heart of God as he will speak to you personally into your life. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord bless you and keep you for the rest of the week. I hope you have a blessed week. And we'll see you again in two weeks with God's help. Amen.